Hey Toy Fans, Aaron here. Today taking a look at the Retro Collection release of Quill from The Mandalorian. He comes to us on that original looking card back, or you could say vintage collection card back. The Star Wars Mandalorian logo, his name, and then a great looking image of Quill on the background of the card. Unfortunately, we still get that large Retro Collection sticker covering up a portion of that image. And around the edges of that card, we're still getting that white printed worn edge. I'm still not a fan of it, but at this point, might as well keep it because this is the third wave of figures and might as well just stay consistent with it. And then, of course, through that blister, you get a good look at the action figure that's included. Backside of the card, everything's the same here for the Retro Collection. Top half gives you a write-up that this line is inspired by the 1970s uh, Star Wars action figures. Through the middle, you got a listing of the other figures that are available in this line or this wave of figures. And bottom half of the card is your legal information. And now taking a look at them out of the packaging. And just a reminder that if you didn't catch on already with the line being called Retro Collection, these action figures are done with the styling of those original uh, 1970s, 80s action figures. So very simple in their looks and obviously in their articulation. I think that's always worth repeating in case someone is new and doesn't know what's going on with the Retro Collection. Onto this action figure though, uh, obviously uh, Ugnaughts were a short character, and this action figure stands just under two and three quarters of an inch tall. I'll stick him here next to the Retro Mando so you get an idea of how the size of this figure looks. While this character was not originally done back in the 70s and mid 80s, I think they're hitting the mark with what they've done. Going in for a closer look at the head, uh, I don't know what his little brown hat would be called. It's not a helmet, but maybe it is. Anyways, uh, detailing to it looks pretty simple for what they're trying to accomplish. Little things sticking out on the sides of the ears. You got a touch of detailing in the sculpt for, kind of looks like a little upside down Wi-Fi symbol. You know, you got some detailing in there. You can certainly make out the strap that runs to the goggles on the top of his forehead. Nice black painting for the goggles themselves. And then through the face, the sculpting they did certainly makes him identifiable as an Ugnaught. Bushy white eyebrows painted in and even that white beard along the sides of his face. The painting is staying right where it needs to be, not bleeding off the edges or anything, and even a couple of well-placed black dots for the pupils of his eyes. Looking at the chest and arms of the figure, yes, the sculpting is certainly pretty simple, but I think overall the costume still looks pretty much in line with how the character did. Colors are probably a little brighter than they need to be, but I want to say that's kind of what they did in the line at the time. You weren't getting too many dull colors. Through the arms, as I mentioned, simple detailing to the sculpt, very soft ruffles and folds sculpted in, kind of accentuating the bend of the arm. You had a bit of an orangish yellow color at the top of the shoulder, pretty close match to how that color looks for the center of the chest. And then you're getting into some green and then dark brown for his gloves. As you can see already, his right hand is sculpted in an open position while that left hand is closed off. So when we show the blaster off, he's only holding that in one hand. Pretty okay with that. And then for the chest itself, they're still giving us his little scarf that was running around his neck. Nice brown painting to that. On my particular figure, I will say on the left side, getting a little bit of bleed through from that yellow underneath. That's something that's probably going to vary figure to figure. Otherwise, the rest of that chest, like I said, simple orangish yellow coloring. Decent sculpt for a belt running around the waist, along with a little touch of brown here and there showing it as it, uh, I guess, goes underneath what would otherwise be pouches sculpted onto that belt. And then on the back side of the figure, you got a decent sculpting for a backpack. You got what looks like a strap running over the top. You can certainly make out the flap of the opening for that backpack. And then kind of continuing for the waist of the figure, but sculpted onto the top of the legs, you got some pouches on the side of each hip. And then for the legs themselves, green pants, Decent sculpting with a vertical seam on the kind of the front side of each pant leg. A few ruffles and such sculpted in there to give it a little bit of dimension. And then some brown boots sculpted onto the figure. As for the articulation, your head spins a full 360, as do the shoulders. And then the legs come straight out and almost straight back. As for accessories, it comes with a single blaster rifle. The design of it seems pretty much in line with what he used in the show. Overall, it's done in a dull black plastic. And overall, the design of it is in line with how those accessories looked for those original vintage figures. You have some simple design elements sculpted onto it with the uh, aiming sights on the top of the blaster, an identifiable barrel coming out of that little square piece in the middle, and a little bit of horizontal lines for some texture on the handle of the weapon. It fits very well in his right hand. It's not loose or anything, so you don't have to worry about it falling out. So overall, for me, I really like this action figure. I think it's unfortunate that we haven't had him released in the main line yet, but I'm certainly not going to complain that he ended up in the retro collection either. I think Hasbro did a great job with the sculpting and with the painting of this figure. I mean, he's still certainly identifiable as an Ugnaught, and while he doesn't look exactly like the ones they released uh, for Empire Strikes Back, it certainly still fits in with that species. So that's going to wrap this one up. 
I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this figure in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.